Hi, uh, welcome back to uh, the, this segment of Bergeron Briefs. My name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell in uh, Worcester. And uh, the purpose of Bergeron Briefs is to really give you a snapshot of a number of issues or problems that you may have thought, thought about or questions you may have had um, that may help you think about ways to live your life. And uh, what we're really trying to focus on today is, you know, I have so many clients that really their goal in life is I want to live in my house until I die, I want to be buried in the backyard. So how do you manage to do that and stay at home? Well, uh, it, one of the tools for doing that, which you've often heard about, and which I often, um, I don't want to say I criticize, I tell people to be very cautious about using the tool, is reverse mortgages. And some people will just tell me they would never use a reverse mortgage because it's too dangerous. Once again, a reverse mortgage uh, is a loan that you take from a bank in return for which you give them a mortgage on your home. Uh, but one of the rules is that the mortgage doesn't have to get paid off as long as you're alive. And there are no monthly payments. So you've got this money. And, ba and basically what's happening is the amount that you owe the bank, the interest on that, keeps accumulating uh, instead of getting paid so that the mortgage keeps getting bigger and bigger. So that's it's a difficult tool to, to deal with, um, but there are some times when you really may want to do it, and one of the places where you really may want to do it is if you want to be making your home safer and adapting it to, to disabilities that you have or that you may anticipate if you want to make your home safe. So I wanted you to understand what reverse mortgages are about, how they work, so that you can decide for yourself whether for this, in this situation or for other situations in your life, you may want to consider a reverse mortgage. And I asked Steve Greenberg to join me to talk about that. <laughs> Steve, can you just tell folks, um, just tell me, so what, what is your background? Why are, why are you here? We were here in beautiful we're Grafton. Here in beautiful Grafton. Are you a foreign person? Are you local? Are you, uh, in, in well, I'm local. Yeah. I'm yeah. out of Worcester where your, one of your offices is located, yeah. uh, of Myrick. Um, lifelong resident of Worcester. I've been in the reverse mortgage industry for the last eight years, focusing mm -hmm. solely mm -hmm. on reverse mortgages and, and no other product at all. And you know, I really think the most important thing that you just said in your introduction is that a reverse mortgage is a tool. And you must have read one of my recent blogs where the first line in the blog was, a reverse mortgage is not the answer nor is a 401k, nor is social security, nor is a pension. It's a tool, all these are tools. And when yep. we take these tools and work them together and take a little piece from here, a little piece from there, now we formulated a nice plan that's gonna enable somebody to live in place. Yep. You know, you always hear the term these days, aging in place. Right. I don't know, that's not something I want to do. Do you want to do that? No, no, really I'd much live. rather live in place. Really and that's live. what we want, and that's what you know, the uses of a reverse mortgage in conjunction with other um, resources that you have yep. in order for you to enable you to do that. Yep. And as I always tell clients, you know, if, to the extent, especially if you're, on, if you're older and you're on a fixed income, to the extent mm -hmm. that you can be paying for things out of cash because you have cash that's laying around, that's great because right. you don't want to be, the last thing you need to be doing when you're retired is to be increasing your monthly bills. Correct. Right. I mean, Correct. You're, you're Absolutely. Trying to, right. Because you're just trying to maintain, you're trying to make sure that your assets aren't shrinking. Mm -hmm. But if there are situations like this where, where the reverse mortgage might be appropriate, then they really should look at it. So if I'm a yeah. person that may be interested in this, right, because I want to fix up my home, for example, mm -hmm. I know we were just talking to someone 
We were just talking to Carol DiRienzo. She was talking about the kinds of repairs that could really make your home safe. The cost of those repairs, uh, you know, you were hearing, you could, you could spend $10,000, you could spend $100,000. Right. So it might be an amount that if I'm an older person, I'd be very concerned about just pulling it out of my savings account. Because Correct. Because I don't have a real big savings Correct. account. Correct. So now I've got this house and I paid for it, you know, and I had a party because I paid off my mortgage and I never wanted another mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. So first of all, to be thinking about a reverse mortgage, how, how, do I, how, do, how does this work? How, who, is, who is eligible and how do you kind of figure out what, right. w whether a whether I could get a reverse mortgage. Okay, well let's we'll, say we'll start. Mar say I'm a married couple. All right, we'll, we'll start Frank a little. And Mary. My friends Frank. Frank and Mary. And Mary yes, right? and I know 80, Frank and Mary well. And they're 80 years old and they've, they've been living in this house for 50 for, for years. For a long time. A long, and they ain't moving. Right. <laughs> you know, um, the best thing is let's just start off from the beginning in a yep. sense, and we'll do a very quick Reader's Digest version. Yeah. A reverse That's good, mortgage. I, you don't and, want to confuse me. Here. Right. I'm Frank, right? <laughs> Not that I'm criticizing Frank and Mary. I'm a little slow on this stuff. So well, we're all just, getting there. So, it, right. Um, the, the reverse mortgage that I'm speaking of specifically is what is known as a home equity conversion mortgage, yeah. H E C M, yeah. otherwise known as a HECM. That's the acronym for it. Home equity conversion mortgage. It is a federal program, it's run by HUD. It's insured by FHA. They set all the ground rules. And so that's a great place to start. If you're mm. looking for information, go right onto HUD's website. There's fantastic information there. It's a way to get some knowledge of yep. how to go about this. Yep. Um, you obviously want to work with somebody that's been in the industry for a while. Um, I'm a little prejudiced. I prefer that you work with somebody that focuses solely on reverse, on reverse mortgages, mortgages that has that as a specialty right. because there are nuances to everything out there. But by, but by the way, so you've said, that, that, so it's a federal program. Correct. So am I borrowing the money from the federal government? No, no. The, the only I'm thing the feds don't do is lend the money. Right. But, they but, set all the ground rules. We work, right. you know, there are different lending institutions out yeah. there that we work with that, that lend the money. So no matter and, which bank or entity that I'm borrowing the money from, chances are they're following the same rules as all the other banks well, they, that are in the reverse it, mortgage it, business. Absolutely. Because they're, they're all following that, these HECM We're all the, under the rules. HUD guidelines. Right. Whatever the guidelines right. that the federal government comes up with, all the lending institutions are, you know, have to adhere to those guidelines. Right. So with that, the best thing to do, as I said, is speak with somebody that's in the industry that's been doing it for a while. I always, you know, make a reference to if you have you know, a knee problem, you're not going to go to a heart doctor. Although a heart doctor might be, a cardiologist is extremely knowledgeable, right. but that's not the specialty. Right. Or even a general practitioner. Or general may, practitioner. may know quite a bit about your knee, but exactly. if it's really bothering you, you may want to get it. You may want to get. So, yeah. you know, I would say that's always a great place to start. It's right at the HUD website. Um, you know, anybody that's in the industry, you know, as myself, get in contact with me, ask questions, the way I do things, it's always on a consultative basis. Right. You know, what is the need? And as I always so, say- Because that's just so important that people realize this is, once again, it's about shopping. Absolutely, it's about shopping. sure. If they're calling you, they're calling somebody else. That doesn't mean they're Absolutely. buying something. It means they're shopping. So you're try they're trying to figure it out. Right? Absolutely, and they should shop around, just as, you know, um, you know, when people are looking for an attorney. Oh, don't tell them that. I won't tell them that. Okay, we they won't go there. No, <laughs> Everything else, though, they should shop. They should but, shop you, know, and, you know, there's good and bad in every industry, and yeah. you want to shop around. Yeah. You want to work with somebody that you're comfortable with, yeah. and, you know, somebody that's going to lead you down the right road and really works on a consultive manner. So you somebody can that's to willing to, let's bring in your attorney. Let's yeah. bring in your financial planner. Let's bring in your family. Let's put everything on the table and look at what this situation is. So, so, give me, so I'm gonna come back to Frank and Mary. So I'm Frank okay. and Mary and I've given you a call, right? Mm -hmm. And we are, let's, we are 80 years old. We're 80 years old, we lived in this house forever. It's in Grafton, right? It was up, now it's down. It's coming yep. back up, right? It's worth $300,000. House is now worth $300,000. Mm -hmm. There's no mortgage. There's Frank and there's me and my wife, okay. right? And we're eight, and we're both eighty years old, right? Right. Give me a give me a sense if we were looking if we were looking to use you know our house to finance any of these kinds of improvements, right? 
First of all, what you, do you have a? Can you give me a general sense, kind of how much we could borrow in that house? Yeah. And what, I, and what if any constraints there would be regarding using any of that money? Just sure. Give, give me a sense. Yeah. At this particular point in time, um, there are no income requirements. There are no credit requirements. They are working on credit requir requirements that are going to come in later down the mm -hmm. road. Could be the first half of 2014. Mm -hmm. It was originally supposed to go in in January, but uh, HUD has delayed the uh, implementation of that at the now, moment. Now, why would there be a credit requirement if I'm not going to have to make a payment on the Well, on the it's, not, it's not a hard credit requirement as there is in a conventional mortgage where you are making those payments. Mm -hmm. The reason why they're doing a little bit of a credit check or they're going to be doing that is to make sure that after all is said and done that there is still dollars available to take care of property taxes, take care of homeowners insurance, take care of you know the miscellaneous that that comes with homeownership. Right. 